there's something wildly satisfying about detailing a car in the rain, which is what I just did on this car, and then pulling it inside, having it be super clean, drying it, finishing up the little stuff at the end, and it's like the garage doors open and it's raining outside. And, oh God, that's just like the most peaceful thing. Uh, if you can relate to that, comment below. And uh, besides that, this is gonna be uh, a bit of everything. So this is the bit of everything vlog. And uh, this is kind of a funny car because I, I actually filmed a whole video on this car. Pretty crazy. I never uploaded it because I shot that on my old camera. And for some reason, I just don't show a lot of that footage. I have a couple cars that were shot on the old camera that I never posted because this camera's way better and the quality blows the old stuff away. So uh, today I'm gonna show you some stuff on this car. It's gonna be a quote unquote bit of everything vlog and we're just gonna have kind of a talk and uh, it'll all be vlog style with no serious rhyme or reason. We're just gonna kind of jump around to some different topics. So let's jump into it. For anyone that doesn't really know this or hasn't seen this before, the Taycan door handles are pretty cool. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's super satisfying. Here's the lock just to see it. Pretty awesome. Alrighty, to start off the video, everybody's favorite topic, paint protection film, and why I think it's the worst thing ever. Well, not quite, I don't think it's the worst thing ever, but uh, we're not gonna get into a big spiel here. If you wanna see some of my comments on paint protection film, watch the Lamborghini Urus video. Uh, I'm gonna make an even bigger video on that soon. That's gonna be way more like in depth. But for the time being, this car is a car that I did brand new uh, when a customer brought it to me. I believe the car had like, I don't know, under 100 miles on it or something like that when he brought it to me. So I mean, this is our work on this car, nobody else's work. And uh, I'm the only one to basically be maintaining this car. So this car, as of right now, is about one year old. It has exactly like, I don't know, 10 miles short of 7,000 miles. And when the customer came to me, he said, you know, Evan, should we do paint protection film? And we had a very in-depth conversation about it. And due to his kind of driving habits and how we knew he was going to drive the car, it made a lot of sense for him to not do paint protection film. So I highly recommended to him not to do paint protection film. He did not do paint protection film, and this does not have paint protection film on it currently. I'm going to show you the front bumper of this car, and some of you might be shocked, some of you might not be shocked, but let me walk you around it real quick. 7,000 miles on a daily driver car is kind of a lot. Um, you know, 12,000 would be, or 10,000 would be about average, so he's a little under that. But as you can see, there is one little baby tiny rock chip in the front of this car in the bumper that's low visibility down here that no one will ever see. And if I do the touch-up on it, because he's gotta bring me a touch-up bottle and I can do the touch-up paint on it, especially on this chalk color, it's gonna blend in really good. And from like, even like two feet away or a foot and a half away in a cars and coffee, you will not see that spot on the car. So we saved him about $2,500 of a full front end PPF that as of right now, he has one baby chip in it that I can fill in and it will be literally in, like un, unrecognizable. You will not be able to see it in the front of the car. Um, you know, so like he saved a lot of money not doing this. And if he keeps going, owns this car another two or three years, I think he'll only own this car another year or two, to be honest, based on our previous conversation. So maximum, what does he get? Two, three more chips like that and we fill them in versus having $2,600 of film and still potentially have that, or and let's just say, let's just say that the film stopped it and he was good. He didn't have any chips. Was that $2,600, $2,500 film still worth one chip stop? I mean, to me, it's not, not even close. This thing looks amazing. It has no extra orange peel from PPF. You know, we would have wrapped all the edges and stuff, but like in the, in the front here like this, you can't wrap edges like that. So there'd be a tiny baby edge in some of those spots. And we do a really good job wrapping stuff but guys, this is like the pinnacle. This is it. This is a perfect car. It still looks brand new. It's got ceramic on it. The ceramic is in perfect health and condition. I mean, there is there is nothing better than a car with no PPF on it, in my opinion, when these are the kinds of situations and driving you're doing where he can get away with it because he's not doing crazy track days and he's not doing you know 12,000 miles a year in highway. Um, those are conversations where it gets a little different, but because he's not doing those things, this car looks really great, and it just kind of supports my, my argument of what does the car look like with PPF after one year? It looks like this. It looks amazing. All right, the next topic is much less controversial than the... <laughs> I can't even say it. The next topic is much less controversial than the first topic, and that was like my third take of that because I kind of laughed too hard the first time I did it. 
uh, paint protection film just gets me going. And my, my longtime followers know this already. So the, the main reason this car was here uh, is kind of a two-part thing. So unfortunately, this car was rear-ended, uh, not real bad, but just a tiny fender bender. Um, where someone, you know, hit them at a stop sign or who might have been on the highway or whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, that's super frustrating. You know, your car was all dialed in, it was perfect, it was nice ceramic coating, it was paint corrected, it was good to go, man. And, you know, whenever that stuff happens, that's really, really frustrating. So a big thing of status detail is, you know, our customer service is really high end. And if something like that happens, it's frustrating. We're always going to get you back on the road. Uh, you know, to, to, the way you were when you left here, we're going to get you back there. So after he was done with all his body shop stuff, uh, you know, we re ceramic coat any panels that have been painted from an accident like that for free. So, for example, uh, they did some paint on the back bumper and then they blended some stuff in over like the top fender. Hopefully my fingers, right? Yeah, over in that fender. Uh, and then I believe like the little wing in the back was also done. So I re ceramic coated all that stuff for free. I actually paint corrected some stuff on it too because it wasn't right. There was a ton of overspray in a couple spots and we just don't screw around with that. The car has to be perfect when it leaves. That's why customers come here. So I don't charge anything for that. Uh, I have, actually have had a customer or two in the past now uh, do go, like go through insurance, um, which I appreciate because then the insurance pays me money. So in those situations, I do appreciate that because I would rather make money than not make money. Um, but in weird situations where your insurance, your insurance won't cover it or it's a huge hassle or something, I'm always just kind of an advocate for my customer and make sure, making sure you guys have the best customer service. So for example, this car is just getting done for free. I'm totally okay with that. And uh, it's not the first time I've done it. It's just all about customer service. So the back of the car is taken care of now, and while the car is here, what we normally do is when we do something like uh, like a, a warranty item uh, ceramic after a body shop is we do a maintenance detail at the same time. So the entire car got a maintenance detail. We're going into spring, and it's just time for that anyways. So I'll walk you around the car and kind of show you some stuff that I did, um, but basically the entire car was cleaned really, really well, and when he picks this car up now, it'll be basically as good as when he picked it up the first time from me. So the maintenance detail, uh, you always get two options. There's a $250 option and a $350 option, and basically the main difference, honestly, between those two is kind of the amount of work they will put into the detail, uh, but the 350 does have a decon of clay bar if it's needed, and it's also gonna give you just like two layers of better wax versus one layer of wax. When I say wax, I mean ceramic sealant. Um, but in general, a little extra just, you know, fine tuning goes into it to make sure the car is perfect. The entire car is washed with uh, basically Gian foam or CarPro Lift, which is a little more of a heavy lifting soap to really get the grime and stuff out. Uh, you know, some people think that CarPro Lift or Gian foam is just like for cleaning what you can see. Like, oh, it cleans the hood better and it cleans the back better because it's a heavier lifting thing. It foams really, really well. And because of that, it goes into all the jams and all the little nooks and crannies under the light and like after we're coming out of winter time and salt's been all over the car it's really nice to have that kind of go like deep into the crevices of the car and kind of dissolve all that out and then when you rinse the car the water takes all the dirt and the foam with it and it cleans it um, after that then we actually use just normal usually like Gian foam or gsf or whatever um, so basically the car's getting a really really deep clean almost two washes in one is really what's happening for the most part um, after we're done with that, we usually throw, if you're doing a 350 package, which is what's going on with this car, you're gonna get hydro or wet coat on the entire car, basically. That's gonna go on the, on the wheels, on the barrels, on the paint, on the glass. Um, what, again, same thing of why I like that is it kind of, when it rinses through the door jams, it coats it, because everything wet coat touches or, or hydro touches, it goes into those things. Um, and then you usually typically get a little bit of cure on top of that afterwards when the car is in here and it's all clean and dry. Um, then you have lots of options because we do bespoke detailing. So then on top of that, um, you can actually add Q2 wax, which will add a little more gloss, which I'm actually probably gonna have a, a chat with the customer about because we haven't, um, and, and at this stage in the video, I haven't uh, actually mentioned this to him, but when he was here, he was like, is there anything we can do for more gloss? And Q2 wax is one of those things. Um, what's really common is we do EXO, which is the, the, the dual layer, the topper and the, and the ceramic coating hierarchy. Uh, a lot of people add that back on, which is usually, you know, 300 bucks or something like that, which can get you to 650 for a maintenance detail. If you do the 250 and then you add that, you're uh, 550 because then you kind of uh, forego like the, the other two waxes, you just do EXO. Um, so there's this point is there's a lot of options you can do just on the outside. So 
because on this car I ended up doing the back half here in ceramic because we had to do that for warranty when there was a little bit of, you know, extra, there's a little extra material, a little extra ceramic in the applicator when I'm done. I actually put that on the windshield for free just because why not, rather not throw it out. Uh, and then we did a lot of interior cleaning. Unfortunately, at some point, the interior, I don't have before shots of this, but uh, at some point the interior was had some armor all on it from the car wash that he goes to. Um, so we've made a very important note. Don't, don't let them do that anymore because it's a pain in the butt to remove that stuff. Uh, but we cleaned all that off the inside as part of the maintenance detail. The inside just got an interior cleaning. Uh, the leather steering wheel and the driver's seat and the passenger seat were cleaned really well. The back seat were in better condition, so those got more of just a wipe down. Um, and then in general, I think that kind of wrapped it up for the inside, I'm trying to think. So the other really big deal um, for something like this is everything gets opened up, all the doors, all the trunks, all the front, the back, everything, and everything is cleaned really well in terms of like the jams and stuff. And uh, I'm gonna show you on that B-roll, like the rubber uh, seals all the way around, all that stuff gets cleaned really well, especially the ones that are like, they're almost like gutters because those can hold so much dirt and so much like uh, sand and so much uh, salt and stuff from wintertime. So all of that stuff is cleaned out really, really well. And then the good detail is obviously that, you know, we clean this stuff, but then the really good ones get back here. Oh yeah, they get in and they clean your flaps. How many detailers are cleaning your flaps, huh? Not very many. So all this stuff is super clean. It's hard to tell down here, but this goes up, see, like a, like a quarter inch to a half inch. So all of that's been cleaned and you can see my finger is totally clean. And same thing back here, guys, like everything underneath here, you can see my finger goes up. So it goes, this is a little like gutter, totally clean, right? So this was cleaned and I don't know what happened to the rag, but when I cleaned this stuff earlier, like jet black dirt came out of it and I almost trashed a whole tile just doing one door. Um, and I did that to all the doors. So all, all of this stuff, um, all, these, all these jams, right? You can slide your hand behind this whole thing. All of these jams were cleaned driver's side. Like there's a little, a little jam here. Hopefully you guys can see this and the door jam, right? All that stuff is clean. And then again, same thing down here, right? So there's a gutter around the front door. That's a really, really important thing to do in springtime when we're coming out of winter. So that's why we get really busy uh, during this time of year. Uh, I think we're currently booked. I I'm filming this uh, end, of, end of March, I think. We're booked into almost June right now. So I mean, like, things are pretty crazy. Uh, so I don't know when this video is coming out, but definitely let me know if you want to do a detail because we're really busy. Um, so yeah, maintenance details are super awesome. It's always great to pair a maintenance detail with any kind of warranty service thing. If you have a, like a body shop problem and you need something re-ceramic coated, doing those things at the same time are a great idea because mainly uh, the ceramic coating takes 24 hours to cure. So it's just gonna sit here doing nothing versus having it sit here and having me do something for you that actually you know brings value back to you. So you're not just losing your car for 24 hours, you're getting a clean car back. because. No, no part of the warranty thing says I'm going to clean your car for free while it's here. Uh, it just says that I'm gonna ceramic coat, you know, whatever was painted. All right, I think this is gonna be the last uh, topic for this video and uh, we're just gonna jump straight into it. So our electric car is cool slash practical slash should you own one, all of it. We're just gonna, we're just gonna talk about all of it. So Teslas are the, you know, the big elephant uh, in the room where everyone talks about them. They're huge cult following behind them. I just, I don't like them, man. Like they don't, they don't look good. And like, they kind of don't drive so good in terms of like a handling kind of situation. They are wildly fast. Okay, like I totally get that. Very good range and felt wildly fast. Like those are, the, that's what they're good at. That's what a car kind of needs to be. It's got to be, you know, if you're kind of a car person, you want it to be fast in a straight line and you want it to have good range because you got to go places, I get it. Um, now, the insides of them can't warm up to it. This doesn't, doesn't look good to me. I don't, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't like it. You can't compare the inside of a Tesla to this or to an AMG Mercedes, you know, like they're just they're way, way different. Um, there's tr tremendous quality control issues with Teslas that really bother me like this huge, ridiculous panel gaps, uh, you know, sections of the bottom of the car that it's <laughs> totally no paint on them, there's nothing. Uh, like, I don't understand that kind of stuff. I don't even know how that happens in a car dealership. Uh, you know, you don't take ownership of a car like this, like this Taycan, and just have no paint on one of the bumpers and then take delivery of it and go, sounds good guys, here's $180,000, I'll see you later. You would be extremely upset and be like, dude, what in the world happened here? Like. Did someone get fired because how did it not get painted? I don't understand. Like the Tesla people are just like, oh yeah, you know, they're a new company, so we just accept these problems. Like, whoa, dude, I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Um, so like they're, they're a weird, they're a weird car and they're kind of a weird company, but they do make very, you know, technically savvy, like amazing autopilot, really good range, really fast, good crisp mode, all that stuff. Uh, so I get it, they're cool, but I just don't want to own one. So the, the question, uh, after that kind of rambling about Tesla is, you know, would I ever own an electric car? And the answer to that is, yeah, I totally would. Uh, I don't know when I'll own one, but I'm, I'm all for it. So this car, the Taycan, is like an amazingly good looking car. So it checks off the box of aesthetically pleasing exteriors. Uh, amazing interior, looks like a Porsche, feels like a Porsche, drives like a Porsche, because I've driven this car the previous time it was here. Uh, very fast, so that's cool. Uh, it has a pleasing sound to it, that the sound they pipe in from, you know, from, from Porsche, whatever they want to call it. Uh, I miss my gas engine noises, and I will always own a gas engine car while still having an electric car, because I need that in my life. Um, but, you know, this, this checks all the boxes of what a quote-unquote car person's car should be, so that's a good, that, that's a good start, because Tesla doesn't check all the boxes, and it's not even close. Um, this car doesn't have any quality control issues. Everything's fit, finished, everything feels really good. Uh, all the interior bits are proper. They, they look like they're supposed to look. That's really important to me. I think that's really important to a lot of people. Um, they're just too much money, and I won't, I won't pay $180,000 for an electric car. I'll pay $180,000 for a GT3 RS or a GT3 or whatever, uh, you know, but not, but not for an electric car. It's not financially there yet, and even if I was, I'd have a hard time spending that much money for something that's electric, because all electric cars from a speed standpoint, kind of the same thing. So it feels weird to buy an electric car that's that much money when I could buy a gas car that's like really special that kind of fits into that price point. So ultimately, uh, just my like idea behind electric cars, I'm all for owning a car like this if I can get it for like $90,000, if I can get like a 30,000 mile one of these for $90,000 in like five years, I'll, I'll probably be all over that. To, drive my daughter to school, pick her up from school, go to the grocery store, take little 30 mile trips. I know the biggest uh, downside on these is they don't have great range. I don't really care. I'm not gonna drive my electric car very far. Uh, I will have a gas powered car for that. Like I'll have an RS6 wagon to drive from here to Wisconsin if I wanna do that. I'm not gonna take the Taycan. The Taycan's gonna be for going to the grocery store, picking up my daughter, taking little 30 minute drives for fun on the electric car. I'm all for that stuff. And then come home, plug it in. That's, it's brilliant, it's great. Um, I'm, all, I'm all for electric cars in that sense. I would never buy an electric car to have just an electric car. That's crazy. I think a lot of really die-hard car enthusiasts are the same way. Um, and that's why I said in the beginning of this little section or chapter or whatever you want to call it, uh, I want to hear what you think. Am I onto something here or is, is this how you view electric cars? If you're a car person, uh, you know, if you've got your G80 or your whatever your, your, your daily driver gas-powered car is, you know, would you want a Taycan to drive around this like town and stuff or is it just ri ridiculous and you can't get on board uh i'm obviously a huge audi fan i think some of you know i think the e-tron gt is just a f fantastic looking car uh the e-tron gt and this you know tie are pretty similar i don't know what i would buy between the two to be honest i, I really like both uh in a perfect world where i had a lot of money and i had a collection i'd probably just have both um but yeah comment below would you have a Taycan? a tesla an e-tron gt uh a lucid air another cool one um, what would you drive? What would you have? And, you know, if you want to go crazy, just tell me your whole garage. What, you know, if you had four cars or something, what, what would you have? Would you have a supercar, an electric car, and two daily drivers? I don't know. Well, comment below, tell me what you drive. And uh, I think, I think that's going to wrap up this video, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment and like the video uh, if you liked it. Uh, we drop videos every Sunday. I'm trying to make a point of saying that in the videos now, just in case people don't realize that. Every single Sunday, I release a video. Uh, and then as I'm making more content during the week, I might drop random videos every once in a while on like a Wednesday. Um, that's going to be random. Every Sunday, there will be a video. Uh, so we'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one.